And now he's lost his mind when he says, bring Jordan Burroughs and all those guys. Because those guys would tear him apart. I don't care how good he is at wrestling in MMA. Following on from his spectacular performance at UFC 280, the hype on Islam Mahachev is at an all-time high. Going into the fight, the word on much of the internet was that it was a poor man's Khabib with a suspect chin. Following the bout, he now seems to be regarded as a souped-up version of Khabib with better striking. In my opinion, much of the hype is deserved. However, going into his fight with Alexander Volkanovsky, there are reasons to think Volk might cause him problems and crazier upsets have happened in MMA. If Volkanovsky is going to have any success, then I think it's going to happen on the feet, scoring points and accumulating damage. In order to have a fair appraisal of how the wrestling styles will clash in this fight, then you have to understand Islam's strengths and weaknesses, and I think no one is better placed to give the lowdown on that than his training partner, Daniel Cormier. While his wrestling is very good, he's got very specific takedowns. It's not a single leg. Or a double leg. He's not the best at that. So if you take Cormier at his word, then it should be believed that Islam will need to clinch with Volkanovski to take him down. This will present two problems. Firstly, because Volkanovski has a background in Greco-Roman wrestling, which is an unorthodox style of wrestling focused on the clinch. Secondly, on the feet, both of these guys employ a movement-heavy striking style, so are unlikely to clinch much. To look at where Islam moves well, you can contrast his performance against Oliveira with Dustin Poirier's, who whilst being one of the best boxers in the organisation, is more of a flat-footed slugger. There were several occasions where Poirier was caught with front kicks, whilst Islam, in contrast, was able to slide backwards out of range. Kevin Lee was also caught by the flying attacks of Oliveira, which Islam skillfully avoided. The problem for Islam going into the Volkanovski fight is that Volkanovski also moves a lot. If you have two guys who both move a lot and are precise with their movements, they are unlikely to clinch much, especially if Volkanovski sticks to his plan of making this a stand-up fight. And uh, it will end up being a stand-up fight because I think he will end up giving up on trying to hold me down because he knows I'm just going to get back up or he won't get me down. One issue with Islam's shots from the outside is that you can see he has a strong left side bias. On many occasions he shoots after throwing a left hand punch or changes stance to drive off his stronger left hand side in some kind of scramble. Considering that he's not a switch hitter, this will make it hard for him to shoot from the outside without changing stance mid shot which will be a telegraph. If you contrast this with George St. Pierre's shots from the outside, you can see his shots are much smoother as a right-hander, he is much more comfortable driving off his on-paper weaker side. Daniel Cormier has also said that Islam isn't as good at shots from the outside as Khabib. It's hard to say if he's referring to in an MMA context or wrestling sparring being done at their camp. It's not a single leg or a double leg. He's not the best at that. Habib was really good at that, getting to the legs, taking you down, lifting you and tripping you. Either way, Islam has said himself that he doesn't rate shooting singles and doubles as an effective strategy in MMA, as they require too much energy expenditure. So all in all, the keys to victory for Volkanovski will be boxing and moving, separating in the clinch and looking to strike. Shooting on Islam repeatedly may be a bad tactic. Islam also scores a lot defensively. However, if he's looking to win a five-round decision, which will probably be the smartest strategy, Mixie in the odd takedown in the third or fourth round could stand a decent chance of catching Islam off guard and present an opportunity to rack up points. One final key factor for Volkanovski is going to be shutting down the kicking game of Islam. If he can counter kicks with takedowns and grind out a round on top, that will make Islam hesitant about kicking and give Volkanovski the opportunity to impose a box and move strategy. So having made some arguments for Volkanovski, next to make some arguments for Islam, which I think is a slightly easier job. I mentioned before how he moves well in a lot of his fights. One reason that I think he's underrated on the feet is because he doesn't use much head movement. 
The reason for this is probably his conservative personality and his concern about ducking into a knee or a kick. Whilst he doesn't move his head much, he has used a pool counter several times in his fights. One Volkanovsky tactic that Islam may be able to capitalise on is that whilst his movement makes his head an elusive target, getting under punching range makes him susceptible to kicks. Max Holloway landed a number of body kicks against Volkanovsky in the third, fourth and fifth round of their fight. Volkanovsky appeared to be not bothered by these, but it's not unheard of to see these finish fights in Muay Thai or kickboxing. In Islam's case, he will be able to target Volkanovsky's liver with his stronger left leg. Further problems for Volkanovsky could be Islam's knee strikes. A lot of the time when discussing striking, people talk about reach, arm and leg length. An overlooked factor in terms of clinch striking can be leverage. If you look at Diesel Noy at 6 foot 2 and weighing in as light as 130 pounds, he was a beanpole in Muay Thai. Yet he became a legend of Muay Thai due predominantly to his knees and knees in the clinch, not his striking on the outside. If you look at Semi Shield in K1, coming from a karate and MMA background, he didn't have as much of a background in clinching and knee strikes as a Thai boxer. Yet K1 changed the rules on clinching, partly because his knee strikes were so effective. Islam has shown an inclination to work knees to the body in many of his fights. He also was able to land a knee to the head against one of his shortest opponents, Davi Ramos. I talked before about Volkanovsky having a background in Greco-Roman wrestling, and he is a two-time national champion. But wrestling as a sport has a very low participation level in Australia, and I would still make Islam a favourite in the clinch in terms of either striking or going for a throw. A further Volkanovsky tactic that Islam may be able to capitalise on is he's made no secret of his plan to scramble back to his feet if taken down. Let's see how he deals with a short man getting back to his feet and punching him in the face. And then, Trust me, I'm going to be very, very, very hard to hold down. The way he talks about it, he almost sounds overzealous. He did give his back away against Chad Mendes trying to scramble back to his feet. And against Islam, he would be in trouble trying the same thing. If you look at his teammate Israel Adesanya, he also tried to rush back to his feet against Robert Whittaker and also gave his back away. You also have to factor in Islam is going to be very competent at wrestling from the back. He's not going to try to do BJJ on the feet. So to conclude the video, I think there is potential for Volkanovski to score enough points on the feet to earn a decision. However, I think it's more likely Islam can hold his own on the feet or even outstrike Volkanovski. Islam probably won't be able to take it to the mat instantly, but he will likely rack up points with takedowns and strikes from the clinch at some point. This is just my take though. Let me know in the comments how you see this fight going.